Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to keep working on this um, assignment that we had where we had to do a number of different things to this Excel spreadsheet using various kinds of text functions and things like that. Well, mostly text functions. There was a few non-text function skills. So we just extracted that middle initial, got that going, and there's the uh, solution to that one. Combination of find functions, count functions, if function, there's a write function in there also. Okay, so that takes care of that one. One of the other skills, um, create a new column called username and create a username for each person by using the first letter in lowercase of their first name and the first seven letters in lowercase of their last name. So let's see, create a new column called username. And I will put this right over here. And I guess I'll, I'll just hide this middle initial. Okay, and this is going to be... Uh, Username. The username is going to be made up of the, let me read the directions again here, the first letter of their first name and the first seven letters of their last name, all lowercase. Let's worry about the lowercase later. This is going to be a simple little concatenate function along with some left functions. So I'm going to do an equals concatenate and I want to join a couple things together. The first thing I will join is the first letter of their first name, which is in my B column here. So I will do a left cell B2. How many characters do I want? Just one. So that'll take care of the left function. And I press my comma. I'm now ready to concatenate the second part, which is going to be another left function. In this case, the cell that contains their last name comma, and then I can do seven for those seven characters. And I do another closing parentheses to finish my concatenate, press enter, and here we go. So I've got R. Evans, J. Uh, Dannison, P. Thomas, A. Walton, and so forth. So that part was pretty easy. Uh, it also needed to be in lowercase, and I could do this in a couple ways. Um, gee, how would you convert something to lowercase? Good old help. Type in the word lower case change the case of text let's see what it says um, unlike Microsoft Word it doesn't have a change case button for change yeah 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 what's what's give me the short answer oh wow proper I haven't used the proper function before but um, as I read through the directions I see that there is a lower and an upper okay so proper is kind of neat I guess that uh, well, okay, yeah, capitalizes the first letter and lowercase the other parts. It's kind of neat. We'll have to come up with that one pretty soon, or use that pretty soon. But basically, there's a lowercase. There we go. So there's a lower function and an upper function. I want the lower function. I could lowercase the individual parts, or I could lowercase the whole result. Since the whole result here is, um, is going to be lowercase, then I could just simply equals lower, opening parentheses, closing parentheses at the end. I'll simply lowercase the entire result. Done and done. There's the lowercase username. Create a new column called password. All right, so let me uh, insert, and this is going to be the password field. Create a new column called password, and create a password for each person by using the first two letters of their last name in lowercase and a random number that's six digits long. Note, research and use the ran between function to create the numeric part of the password. Okay, so I need the first two letters of their last name and then a random six digit number. Got it. Another concatenate. Let me go ahead and hide username for now. Get that out of the way. Give myself plenty of room to work. Equals concatenate. Left. First two years. Oh, shit, I already forgot. first two letters of their last name. So I need last name, comma, two. So I've got those left characters. Now I'm ready to concatenate the second part, which is going to be my six digit number. I'm going to use ran between. The lower limit ran between is going to be one, 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 one. There we go. That's six digits. That's not the lowest six digit number we could do, but that's the lowest six digit number I'm going to do. And the upper limit, nine, 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 nine. That's the upper six digit number. Close that off, and there we go. But I did want lowercase for these, so obviously you could apply the lowercase to everything, but since really the only letters are these up here, I can actually lowercase lower the left result. 
closing parentheses. So I'll do a lower version, lowercase version of the first two letters of their name. There we go. So that is the password generation. That wasn't too bad. A little bit of concatenate, a little bit of ran between. Um, technically, there's a risk. We could have two people the exact same six digit number, and those two people could also have the same first two digits of their last name. So this isn't the most foolproof way to get unique passwords, but uh, it's pretty good for us, and it gave us a little experiment using some different functions combined. What else is on the list? I'm just looking here at my directions. Um, create columns next to purchase price and mortgage amount. So let me go ahead and hide this. Don't need that anymore. Looks like I don't need that street either. Let me hide that. All right, so I need new columns next to purchase price and mortgage amount. Um, the displays price and currency format. Okay, so let me just change these out to purchase and mortgage. And basically, I wanted you to take these numbers and I kind of give you an example and direction. So a purchase price of 199 will show 199,000. Use an if function though to display an empty cell instead of a zero. So basically, instead of 199, I want 199,000. Instead of 209, I want 209,000. But if they got a zero, I don't want 0,000 or just zero. I want it to just be an empty cell. So simple little if function equals if. If the purchase price is equal to zero, then give me an empty set of cells. Otherwise, take this amount and multiply it by 1,000. There we go. And then I can format as a currency. So take this price, make it into a 99, uh, into a thousands. And I didn't want those zeros in there because those zeros will affect our averages. Zeros will bring down the average artificially. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm going to do something similar for mortgage equals if, I can write it in a different way though. Um, if the mortgage amount is greater than or equal to one, then give me that mortgage amount times 1,000. Otherwise, give me an empty set of quotes. That worked out pretty well. And the very last thing you needed to do was calculate the averages for the two columns you just created. Note, since there are no zeros in your prices, the averages will not be reduced by zero amounts. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom here. And I'm going to average in these other numbers too, just so you can see how those look. Equals average. And I will simply select boom all of this. Oops, went a little too far. Press enter, and I'm going to autofill this to the right. So I just wanted to point out how you can get different numbers. So the average of my first thing that included some zeros came to 272, whereas if I don't use the zeros, I get 279,000. Same thing over here. Average with the zeros was 183, but without the zeros, 207,000. So, so the zeros really do affect the results. So let me just delete those. And these are the averages that I wanted to see, and I can format this. Let me just uh, hit my little format painter take care of that, make it a little wider, and those are the average of those two columns. And that concludes that particular assignment, working with, the, uh, working with this uh, home, sold, uh, home sales data. Have fun with that one.